Hello world. Today we're going to discuss cultural competence. Cultural competence is the ability to understand and work with people of different cultures and different cultural worldviews. To effectively communicate with people with different worldviews and with a level of cultural competence, it is important that you gain knowledge of different cultural views on topics, workplace, and living experiences. And this video is to help you gain an understanding of situations and scenarios that might be viewed differently based on your cultural experiences. The next two clips are gonna cover cultural biases when it comes to testing. Now these are opinions, but you'll see that this is brought up in a television show that ran in the 70s, as well as a television show that's currently running now, and how they're both tackling a similar problem or what is perceived as a problem, and how there could be cultural biases and a difference of opinion when it comes to testing. Mr. Gallagher, a word. Liam failed his exam today. He only got two out of 10 questions correct. I didn't understand the questions. What kind of questions are we talking? Basic word association. Jennifer blanked the glue and finished her project. The choices were applied, kicked, or sliced. Liam scribbled them out and wrote, sniffed. Well, technically, it works. What else you got? The front door is to the foyer as the back door is to... The choices were sidewalk, kitchen, street. He wrote How the <laughs> would he know what a foyer is? What are we, the Rockefellers? These questions are standardized across the private school curriculum. To favor the students who understand the references. This is cultural bias. You put his face on your brochure, but you ignore his background. I understand your concerns, Mr. Gallagher. Great. What are you going to do about him? Honey, you never walked away from a test before. Tell us what's really bothering you. Mama, they don't know it, but that IQ exam was nothing but a white racist test. Oh, Michael, how could it be a white racist test? All school children take it of all colors. Yeah, but this one was given by the white people, made up by white people, and even graded by white people. It don't tell you how smart you are, just how white you are. That's why they ask questions on a test like this. Complete the following phrase, cup and, and you have to choose from four words, wall, saucer, table, and window. You know what my friend Eddie put down? Oh. Cup and table. Because in his house, they don't have no sauces to put under the cup. <laughs> you know something, when I was a kid, we didn't have no sauces to put on the table either. And get this question. A mother and father and two children live in a five-bedroom residence. The mother and father sleep in one bedroom, and each of the two children has a room to himself. Mm. How many guest bedrooms are there left? Now, how many kids in the ghetto even know what a guest bedroom is? Cultural competence is not something that's just required by the majority, but it's also required of minorities. And this minority is not just an ethnic base, but it could be any position in life that causes a difference between one group and another group. Look at these next two clips and see if you can see the biases that exist. So really the important thing to remember is these are just things we've heard. So here's stereotypes that Asians have about white people. Hey guys, I'm really excited for this one. Let's, Let's get, get into, into it. The ball rolling. <laughs> these are stereotypes that Asian parents have about white people. White people always seem to be the boss. Well David, excellent performance this quarter, but unfortunately we're gonna have to let you go. White people love overpaying for things. Yes, it is an old Asian parent stereotype that no matter how much money white people make, they're just gonna spend it all on a bunch of things that Asian people would never buy. Organic produce at Whole Foods, first class flights, or at least getting the extra leg room for 75 bucks, warranties on electronics, summer houses or cabins on the lake, high tech camping gear, swimming pools and hot tubs, and jet skis and boats. White people get away with doing things that Asian people would not. Speeding tickets, not taking off their shoes in the house, bringing dogs into places where you're not supposed to bring dogs and any minor infraction involving the police. Officer, I am so sorry. Uh, I can reassure you that all these people are going to be leaving right now. No Definitely. Hey, me and you. Let's go. Let's, let's go. Do this. <laughs> game time. Your form gets better oh, in the game. It's a warm up. It's a warm up. The last two clips are going to help you understand what's going on with cultural bias, cultural competence, and some of the things that we need to ask ourselves in order to improve how we view others, how we want to be viewed, and why there might be a difference when two people see the same thing. Most of us spend a good amount of time at work. This makes the environment at work especially important to us. 
So what's the difference between an okay place to work and an amazing place to work? The compensation, the benefits, the location. Well, those are certainly important, but for most of us, what distinguishes an okay work experience from a truly great one is the culture. It's the way we feel when we walk through the doors and greet our colleagues. It's the vibe, the energy, the spirit of our organization. Now consider the difference between an okay work environment and a terrible one. Imagine what it's like to work someplace where you feel you don't belong. Can we expect someone to do their best work if they feel threatened, unhappy, or unsafe? Would any of us want to be in an environment where we can't trust our colleagues and managers? Or where we feel ignored, misunderstood, and disrespected? No chance. Given the choice, most everyone would prefer a more respectful workplace. But what does that really mean? What is it that happens in great organizations that makes the experience of working there so uplifting, so supportive, so positive? For most of us, the answer comes down to how we're treated. We do our best work. We thrive and succeed when we feel respected and appreciated. And when we're free to be ourselves, when we're encouraged to apply our unique experiences, skills, and talents to the work we do. To ensure our work environment is a place where we all feel valued and respected. And what's in it for you? Well, a workplace which lacks respect will be less productive, more stressful, and a generally unpleasant place to spend your time. Doesn't sound very appealing, huh? On the other hand, a respectful workplace is collaborative, encouraging, and the type of environment where we're able to do our best work. Put another way, we're more likely to care about our organization and those we work with if we feel they care about us. So Thank you for taking a look. We appreciate you, and we'll see you again real soon.